Magic these days is a very international business. Here's a genuine piece of Chinese magic to see how carefully you're watching. Two, two bamboo poles, as you can see, they've cunningly dr drilled a hole right through the top. That's so that piece of cord can pass in between the two sticks. First of all, a little Chinese magic. If I pull this one, obviously that one there goes up in the air. When you pull that one, that one there goes up. Now we do a little bit of Chinese magic. For that, you need a sharp pair of scissors. I'm gonna cut the string right in the center. That way I can separate the stick so that one is no longer connected to that one on the other side. But the strange thing is, when you pull this one, that still goes up in the air. When you pull that one, that one there goes up. I can see you're imagining that it goes around here, but if I cross them over like this, when you pull that, that still goes up. When you pull that one, that one there goes up. Through the center? No, it doesn't. You see, if you put that one over there, the whole thing gets ridiculous. When you pull that, that still goes up. When you pull this one, that one there goes up. I watched the Chinaman for hours. All of a sudden, he did that. Apparently, all he did was take a little hair, tie it around there, one little pull, and that wound up the whole trick. I've never actually been to China, but I have been to India, and there I kept hearing about this amazing thing where a man took a piece of rope, he threw it in the air, and it stood up straight. A little boy climbed to the top, and he disappeared. The famous Indian rope trick. I wish I could do that. Instead, I'm going to show you how to tie a knot in a piece of rope without actually letting go of the ends. It's quite simple, you do that, and you get a slip knot. That means you can slip it off. I'll do that again. You go around there, it should land in the center. If it doesn't, don't worry, it's a slip knot. That means you can slip it down a little bit. Now, this is the nearest we get to the Indian rope trick, watch. You must have seen magicians many times on television. They always have a piece of rope and invariably a very sharp pair of scissors, rather like this. They aim for the middle of the rope, and what do they do? That's right, they cut the rope. And then they trim the ends away, something like this, and they squeeze this broken rope. And in some strange way, it joins up. You must have wondered how they do it. Well, the whole thing is really an illusion. They don't really cut the rope, but it looks like it. Look, if I do that, that must look as if I've actually cut the rope. I'll do it again, that looks as if I've cut it twice. In fact, I haven't cut the rope, but it looks like it. It's a very good illusion, because later on you will believe that you actually see three pieces of rope. And I expect, there at home, they all look as if they're the same length. They're not really, you see. As a matter of fact, there's one little tiny one, there's one middle one, and there's one very long one. That is what is known as a stretch of the imagination. Look, if I put the ends together and blow, and stretch. We've got those three pieces of rope again. There's number one, there's number two, and there's number three. You'll remember at the beginning of all this, I told you that in fact I hadn't cut the rope. Therefore, it should still be in one long piece. I'll join those two together, like that. And then we go through that tricky little operation again up at this end, so that we have the appearance that the rope is now back where we started in one long piece. Of course, it's a pity about those little blemishes in the middle. If we could get rid of those, that would be a good trick. It's not easy. You have to hide away the knots, just like that. Then you hope for the best by taking hold of the end. <laughs> Blow, and now we're back where we started with one long piece of rope, something like that.